All right, I think I'm tempting the demo about tonight because I'm going to be almost all demo for a lot of talk, which may not be great, but we'll see how this goes. Hi, I'm Andrew Beyer. I'm a developer and team lead at PATH. I'm also a puppy organizer. I think I recognize many of you from programming nights. If not, I'd encourage you to come out to one sometime. I'm going to talk tonight about input lib resources. This has been around for quite a while, and I find that I have had very few instances need to use it recently, and I've run across a number of people who have never used it and aren't even familiar with it. So this is a little bit of a PSA about why we what might want to use this. Daryl just talked about resources, but this is a different sort of resource. So in this context, a resource is some piece of data that sits alongside a code that we need access to from the code. So this is going to be a simple one here just for the sake of demonstration. We have a text file. If we look at our text file, it says hello world. We have a program, and we print out Hello World by reading in from our file. This works fine. Unless I change directories. All of a sudden, it's not right next to our current location anymore. There's a really common workaround for this. And I think most people know this one, though it might be news for some. The Dunder file special variable tells you the path of the current source file. So whenever you know that you have a resource that sits next to your source file, you can give it that and open your file relative to that. So this is because it's giving me the full path instead of a directory to go up one level of its parents and then open the file relative to that. So now, that works here and from another directory. So, feels like we have a solution. Now it's time to package our code and distribute it to someone else. So, I'm not going to dig into packaging right now. I could have talked since the beginning of this meetup tonight, not been halfway through, and half of the room would have fallen asleep, and half of the room would be furious at me because I was doing it wrong. So, <laughs> we are just going to assume that we are packaging. This packaging is a little bit different, though, we'll get to that in a second. So, I have this set up so we can build a wheel from this. If we're actually distributing this, we'd be uploading our wheel to PyPI and installing it from there, too. The gear will just have installed directly from the wheel. Uh, and I'll just install it anyway. And I set it up so I can just run my package directly, so. It works, or at least it looks like it does. So, for a simple case, that works. But there is a little bit of a complexity about that. This setup is doing a bit more than that. In addition to just building a wheel, I'm actually also building an executable file. So, there's a tool that some people may be familiar with, PyOxidizer. It's a, one of a family of newer Rust-based Python tooling. And it's actually a really neat tool. Let's take a look at this here. It lets you embed CPython, the Python standard library, your dependencies, your code, and your resources all into a single executable file. So you can hand that to someone, they double click it on their machine, they don't have Python installed, they don't have your code installed, they don't have to pip install anything. So that is a really cool and useful thing to have, but it adds some issues. So if you go in and long ugly path that it builds into, but I have an executable here that it built. And we get an error. Dunder file is not defined. So this is a little gotcha some people don't know. If you look up docs for Dunder file, Dunder file is optional. It might be missing for certain types of modules such as C modules that are statically linked into the interpreter, or any other cases, like a module loaded from a database. That may seem a little crazy, but I actually know for a fact 
that there's an extremely large financial institution whose name they don't like to publicize when this is talked about that stores every single one of their Python source files as a row in a database and loads them dynamically from the database as they execute it. Importantly, <laughs> is how you do that magic. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, import lib itself is machinery behind how the import statement works. And among other things, it lets you customize the import statement to do things like load your source files from a database or anything else. Pyoxidizer takes advantage of that to load your resources directly from the inside of an executable. But import lib now offers a different way of accessing resources because Thunder file assumes you have a file system. It, it, the inside of your executable does not have a file system. So, import lib resources is sort of a replacement for Dunder file when you need to access something relative to your code, but you don't know if your code is necessarily a file. If you take a look at this here, we're doing essentially the same thing in a slightly more verbose way to package. So we're just currently looking at thunderfile slash resource.txt. The reason that worked when we just install a wheel, even though the wheel itself is a single file, when you pip install a wheel, let's actually take a look in our virtual environment, we end up with our package actually expanded out into a directory structure of files. That's why that works when you just pip install a wheel, but doesn't work when we're looking directly at the executable. So let's take a look at an alternative implementation. The nice thing about import the resources is that it gives you a path like object. I can work with it just like I would work with a normal path. Simply by importing res import the resources and then accessing this files attribute on it, or this files function. Files gives me back a path-like object based on a package name, so I'm just using Thunder package, which is the name of my current package. Pyoxidizer has a special import lib hook that tells it that the files-like abstraction on top of a executable is actually its own library that knows how to read a resource out of an executable. And then I can just use path directory traversal, give it the same name, open it, read it, just like I would a file. And it works as an installed wheel. But also, if I look inside my built executable, it works there too. So, I would encourage anyone, if you're building any packaged code that you're sharing with anyone else, or even that you're just using internally, if you have any sort of resource file, rather than using Dunder file, consider using import lib resources. That's sort of the blessed way of doing that now. And by doing that, you enable any of your users to then use something like Pyoxidizer to distribute their code in a more friendly way. Thanks. Also, old news in general. But yes, Vim is slides. I, I didn't even go fancy here. I just had Vim open in tabs. But yes, Vim is a wonderful way to do presentations. <laughs>